So although the Epsom ET4750 comes with a disc for the software, it's recommended that for Macs you download the drivers and software from the actual website. And this is especially applicable if you don't have a disk drive in your Mac. I do actually because I've got desktop. But as they told me to download the software, this is what they told me to go on the Epson website. Because I live in the UK, I've gone on the Epson.co.uk, Epson spelled E-P-S-O-N, not O-M, but O-N.co.uk. And I've gone to the support tab. So when you come on the site, you can go to different tabs and you have to click on the support one. There we go again. And then you find your model. So in here, you need to type your model in. So E T Eco Tank, the dash. And uh, 4750. 4750. Do a search and then scroll down the page and this is how I got the manual so you go to manuals and documentation and first of all you literally download that massive great big file there this one here it's huge that's what I downloaded so they recommend when I phoned the tech people that you download this document here which is literally a 200 plus page document. So when you download it, nice bedtime reading. This is like the manual you usually get in a box, but because everything is going paperless these days and it's better for the environment, you get it on your actual Mac or Windows, PC, whatever you've got at home. I use Mac, so I refer to Mac loads throughout this video it basically downloads to your device that's what i'm saying and then this is the user guide it's just huge see tons and tons of stuff it just goes on and on and on and on and on and on and on it's got to give lots of pictures and screenshots with it so someone's gone to a lot of time and trouble to write this out which is great because this has got a scanner, a photocopier as well, and a fax machine. So uh, this is what it was saying earlier. With the nozzles. That we did. So, yeah. It's got it all here. All here. And this is what we've got to do next. Is putting the... Um, software in for Mac and then when you want to download the drivers and software you go here this has got drivers for the product setup basically it recognizes the operating system automatically it detects it which is great because that is correct and then you know that you've got the correct updaters software drivers etc and you just literally click these and it will show you what to do and have all the downloads there. So you just go through each of these right our way up to the top. So you've got all of these ready to go. And you should, the tech team said to do it in order. You don't necessarily need all these event management stuff. In fact, utility if you're not going to use it. But it could be good to have it on there just in case, couldn't it? So let's do all this next. So here in page 24 of the manual under network settings, they are saying we recommend using the installer to connect the printer to a computer. You, you can run the installer using one of the following methods. Set up from the website, access the following website, and then enter the product name, go to setup and start setting up. Set it up the, using the software disk. Insert the software disk into the computer and follow the instructions. And then you select the connection methods. So if you go into Apple and then System Preferences, which is what I'm in now, you can take your old printer off because you want to do that before installing the new one, really. So this was my old uh, printer, bless its heart, my Oki ES7411. 
and I'm just going to get that rid of that and delete it delete the printer and what I'm going to do as well is I'm going to go to files on here my file manager and I'm going to look for anything OK related because I don't want anything that's okay to still be there. I don't mind the um, documentation still there from years ago when I was picking, but the drivers, anything like that. So this uh, will have to be gone. When the drivers, I'll have to go. You know, all these drivers here will have to go. These ones here at the bottom. So I'm just going to get rid of those now. Trash. Trash. And then what you want to do is try and find your library because it will have files in there. Then go up to there, click on help, and then type in library in the search bar up there. See? Library and then it will show you where it is you click on that and then this has got everything in the library and this is really important you take out any files that you don't want to keep in there if you've got anything to do with um your previous printer in there then you can get rid of that it might cause you issues else so if i type in okie see if there's any okie files in there so you've got all this Oki data here and Oki installer plist. You don't need all this. You just get rid of all this. So I would just literally delete these. I've got rid of everything I can find on Oki that I don't need anymore, which is my old printer. I've uninstalled the old printer uh, from my Mac. I'm now going to download all these items. Epson setup guide, drivers. But a tech person told me to download all this. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven to download. <laughs>
this one is called Epsom product setup. So uh, it says double click. So this is a web installer. Uh, yeah, I want to open it. It will ask me first because some things are dodgy on the internet. It's all security protected my, um, my Mac. Then we have to follow this online now. We have to click here. Next information on the internet. Epson software connects to the internet to install latest software. Software to be installed. Driving utility. A manual. I've already got the manual, but never mind. Downloading essential software. See, it will have little ticks on the left hand side when it's finished. And this will be highlighted so you can actually click next, you know. So it's installing the printer driver. It might take a while to do this. So what we need to do is relabel that one while we're waiting. So we just right click on it if it's on a Mac. This one is called Epsom Product Setup. Rename. Just click enter and then that's all done. Should be done. So it's changed. So we need to wait till it's done and go through all the different settings. So it's now asking me if I've finished filling ink into the ink tanks. Well, as I did that clean earlier, it's taken some of the ink out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the ink from the bottles that are left and I'm going to fill the remaining ink up. I think that's a great idea. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put this tray, paper tray like that and then I'm gonna do these inks again. So I've just switched my fibre optic lamp on up there which is a bit noisy but it will help um, with the printer you know to shed some light on it and I've just been refilling the inks as you can now see the black one now is a lot fuller and I'm gonna refill the others up it's not quite full up to the top line though, so I could use a bit of the other bottles. So I use the rest of the ink up and it, after the clean it's all great apart from the black because as you can see that's not filled up to the top. Can you see that? Whereas the other three are. And there's no more left in any of the bottles. They're all empty, see? Well, you can see a tiny drop in there. Very tiny drop in there. Very, very, very tiny drop in the very bottom. It's really hard to see in this one. The black, it's like, you know, there's nothing more in it, which I'm a bit disappointed about actually. I could have done with filling the black up as well. Because now I don't know exactly, I wanted to, you know, be able to find out exactly how much ink that would take in the black so my only other option is to fill it up with a little bit of the next black one to get an accurate reading of how much ink i'm actually going to use i think i'll do that because i need to have a really good idea so i managed to do that with the black ink can you see it's fully up to the line. It's really dark in my room now because I've been spending all day doing this. But this is a new bottle of ink. The second one. And it's full up to the top now. So at least I can get the levels right to start off with. And by the way, when you're lifting this up and down, you have to lift it up together, these bits. So if you don't lift them up together, you won't be able to pull them up to put the ink in. And don't touch that bit in the middle says don't touch your hand because it will cause problems with the printing if you get your fingers on it so then once you've made sure the caps are all right you put that back down then you have to lower that down but see if you try and lift that up that's just a scanner right which is great because it's got beams of light but if you try and you know lift this up you've got to lift it all both up not just one bit to get the to put the inks in so now we can set the levels. But yeah, basically you press next. I'll select the colours. I did all of the colours. You have to click on all the colours. 
make sure that there is enough ink in the ink tanks. The ink levels are below the lower line. Refill ink and reset the ink levels. Okay. Click that and click next. And now to do the internet connection. I'm going to go for Wi-Fi this time. See if it works with Wi-Fi because it's better than having cables all over. Okay, let's see if it will work. Enter the password. Okay. Oh, we've got to go on the printer's control panel next. Basically, I've got PlusNet Hub. And um, enter your password and your wireless key. So we've got to do that on the actual control panel of the printer. Wi-Fi settings, we can just press on there quickly. Um, and then, because that's a shortcut, and we press that. And then we can do start setup. Wi-Fi setup wizard. Hope this will work. There it is. It's mine. So I've got to enter my password now. So then you hit the start setup button. And it should say connecting to network if you've done it correctly. And if it's working, my Wi-Fi is sometimes a bit dodgy where I live. Wi-Fi setup is complete. Print the connection check report for details. So I need to pull this out again. A firmware update is available. Update the firmware from the settings menu. Okay. You can register to Epson Connect from Epson Connect services menu. So there's a firmware update, but it might come through once we've done the other settings. So let's see if it says there's a firmware update after we've done the rest of the settings. So um, let's go back to this. Like, let's click on next now we've set that up. Make sure the printer is on and there are no messages on the control panel indicating that the printer is performing operations such as charging ink. Tap on the home screen. I've already done all this. Start that up. Saddle wizard. <laughs>
computer is connected to 5G, however, the printer is only capable of connecting. Well, it can't be only connect, connecting, capable of connecting to a 2.4 gigahertz band Wi-Fi network, can it? If, if it's updating it. Because it needs, it has to update it over Wi-Fi. It'll be interesting. It says it's updating it. Do not turn the power off when the update is complete. The power will turn off and on automatic so it looks like it's working even though it's saying it's not will it work because i've double checked it and it says you have the latest firmware no need to update so it's updated it so i don't understand why it's saying that the printer is not connecting to the wi-fi network because it 100 percent is i've got to do this and connect it to another network but i don't have another wet work and it worked so i don't really understand that so i'm just going to carry on because i've done all that if you fail to connect, load A4 paper, plain paper, then tap print check report to connect, print a connection report. Search for printer. So we'll see if it's if it's working or not. If not, it will say it's not. I'll just quickly take a screenshot of this IP address and I'm just going to do that so I know what the printer is. IP is, it's really important. And then click next. Current IP address for the printer is set as below click change to change the settings or click next to continue click next i think and that hope for the best register the epson printer driver okay i'll just go for a wizard like usual isn't it seems self-explanatory let's print the test page and see if it's actually working we'll tell where it's working or not if the printer doesn't do anything then i know it's not working at the moment it's not printing anything oh well, now it's printing a bit slow though isn't it Now let's see what it says. Well, it, despite it saying it's not going to work, it clearly has worked. Colours are rubbish. Though. Look at those colours. They're so faded in the background. Do you know what I mean? It's like, what the hell is that? I'm going to have to test all the colours. It's all splodgy. And the main bit said, congratulations, you've finished setting up your printer. Want to print and scan from anywhere? Epsom Connect Solutions. It's the magenta that's bad. Can you see it? The magenta's so bad. It's all faded. I'll have to play around with it. Well, at least that's clear. I mean, the text on that's clear, isn't it? Congratulations, you're finished setting up your printer. Want to print and scan from anywhere? Epson Connect Solutions. Go mobile. Print your photos and documents using your smartphone, tablet, or mobile computer from your couch, the office, or from any across the world. Please visit your local Epson website to check the product compatibility. For more details on Epson Connect Solutions, visit the website. If there are any quality problems in your printouts, click the link. Click here when the printout quality is poor on the screen or follow the on-screen instructions to check the print head nozzles or clean the print head. It's just all splodgy. Nozzle check. Let's do a nozzle check. Just uses ink unnecessarily, I think. That's what I don't like. Do you know what I mean? The quality is very poor with the ink which I'm not happy about you know it's a shame really <laughs>